it'll pass over. Tell somebody, say it'll pass over. It's it, come on, just your weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Hallelujah. And this too will pass in the name of Jesus. God bless you all this morning. Praise God. Well, I'm here this morning to preach for a little bit. Amen. Let's go into the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, uh, verses 1 through 13. We'll read this chapter this morning as a text. As we look into the Holy Script today, God's going to uh, speak to our hearts and help us. Uh, we pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. One thing uh, I have people ask me all the time, is, and, and I've had people ask me, say, how do you get some of those preachers to come to your church like they come? We have them come from Lebanon, Missouri, uh, Olds, Iowa. We've got some coming from Grundy, Virginia. Brother Josh Bowman, he'll be with us in June. Uh, got uh, Sister Beth Stevens out of Athens, Georgia. I had somebody ask me years ago and I, uh, we was in, in uh, as I worked, and I was a foreman, had a truck and used to set up your trucks with tools and things, and, and uh, uh, we didn't have a whole lot. We just got certain things that was kind of uh, uh, standard for each truck, and I'd got some side boxes for my truck, and I had one of the foremans kind of taunting me, and he said, oh, yeah, your buddy's with the boss. You got side boxes. He said, how'd you get those? I said, I asked. <laughs> you see, all we got to do is ask, and we can get things to happen. Amen. But uh, uh, I said all that to say this this morning, that uh, it could be intimidating to follow up behind uh, uh, some of these ministries. And we have some, uh, I believe, world-class ministries coming into our church and, and uh, to preach and uh, to maybe to follow with Jeremiah Yoakam in, in, in praise. Uh, but understand today, Amen, that you are unique by nature and that God really does need you to be you. And just go ahead. It's very freeing to understand today that I don't have to be anybody else but who God's created. I should be all that I can be in Christ Jesus. But understand today that God's got a certain flavor uh, through John Kitty. Amen. So we just preach that way and hope that it blesses you this morning. In Isaiah chapter 55, the Bible reads this way, and it says, uh, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come to ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat, and yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness incline your ear and come unto me here and your soul shall live and i will make an everlasting covenant with you even the sure mercies of david behold i have given him for a witness to the people a leader and a commander to the people behold thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not and nations that knew not thee they shall run unto thee because of the lord thy god and for the holy one of israel for he hath glorified thee. Verse 6 said, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Amen. How many is glad for abundance of pardon today? For my thoughts are not your thoughts, and neither your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, and my ways than your ways, my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down in the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. I'll prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. For ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing 
and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall come, it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to talk to you today for just a few minutes about an invitation that God gives and extends uh, uh, to all of mankind. Now, we understand today, and, and I'm sure that you, especially this time of year, seems like spring weddings are very, uh, uh, very uh, common. And, and at this time of year, we, we get uh, invitations to go to uh, graduation ceremonies, and, and you may have gotten one in the mail. And sometimes they're, they're really fancied up and, and in lace and, and uh, a fancy font and and uh, it's, it costs somebody to send that out to you. But understand today that an invitation, it's quite nice to get that. To, uh, you've been specially invited to something. They want you to know that they would like you to be there. God has given invitation to all of mankind. He said, come, amen, ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye by and eat. And there is an invitation for everyone today. And uh, the, the, the flip side of that story today is that, I guess, uh, he said, come those that are thirsty. So really, if you're not thirsty today, this message is not for you necessarily at this particular time because God kind of knows. Uh, but I understand today that, that even if you don't think you're thirsty, that God knows how to make you want to drink. Uh, Hey, someone said you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. It, God understands that a little bit, but he knows how to make sure uh, that you're going to want uh, uh, to wet your appetite uh, with that water from heaven. Hallelujah. Will you pray with us and just allow the Holy Spirit to speak for a few moments? Father, we give all things into your hands. Uh, we thank you for this appointed time. We pray that you'd bless this audience. Uh, give us ears to hear, hearts of understanding. God and God we promise to give you all the praise for all things in Jesus name hallelujah amen the prophet Amos wrote about a time when the word of God would no longer be a priority in the world the Bible says in Amos chapter 8 verses 11 and 12 the days are coming to declares the sovereign Lord when I will send a famine through the land not a famine of food or thirst for water but a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. People will stagger from sea to sea and wander from north to east, uh, searching the word of the Lord, but they will not find it. Uh, now, I understand today uh, that there is, there is still some good old gospel preaching uh, that is uh, being given uh, upon the face of the earth right now. Don't give up on the church. Don't give up on God. God is still working His wonders in our world today. He's still got a voice uh, and people that are hard after Him this morning. But the Bible says in Amos, it says uh, that there would be a famine uh, uh, for Him hearing of the word of the Lord. And sometimes today it seems like it's sad, but God's word truly isn't a priority for some people. And even in a setting like this today, y'all are looking up here fine. We've got the word. You've got a Bible in your hand maybe, and it's printed up on the big screens this morning where you can see it. But you see, some people will see and not see, and some people will hear and not hear. It's important today that you understand the way your flesh works. You've got to make sure that you're giving heed to the invitation that God has given you. You see, there was an invitation given here in the Scripture to all those who are thirsty. Amen. Have you ever been working? I'm sure you have on a hot summer day and, and somehow through that process or maybe it's out on a, on a baseball field in the hot sun and, and uh, uh, we've got some things to help us today. Amen. I got me one of them big chairs with a cup holder. I, I'm, I'm wanting to get one that's got the canopy and a little fan that sits right here too. Amen. And a button to push for somebody to bring me hot iced tea or something. But understand, when you're out in those 
those kind of conditions, it will cause you uh, to want to drink water. There's nothing on the face of this. I heard people, and some people will drink a hot cup of coffee when they're thirsty in the summertime. That's really not the norm, is it? Amen. And somebody, I, I used to work with a tobacco operator like that, and some people want uh, a big uh, glass of Pepsi, but I don't think that that's really normal. As a matter of fact, I think that if you get thirsty enough, uh, if you get in the right conditions at the right time, uh, that at some point you're going to say, give me a bottle of water. Give, amen. Give me something to drink. There's nothing that can satisfy my appetite uh, but that living water. Amen. And you know today, amen, that uh, uh, there's some things that can create a, 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 a thirst for water. Uh, when you work hard, uh, when, you, when you're exhausting yourself like that, when you're out uh, in the right conditions, it, can, it creates a, a desire for water. Now understand today that when it's hot enough and the conditions are just right, that uh, that there's a process that you go through and and you drink because and because you're expending water and and it's a thing called sweating. I don't want to talk about sweating today, but sweating something that's healthy and it's cleansing for us. It helps your body get rid of toxins. It cleanses your skin. Sweating gives you circulation uh, going uh, and and increases cardiovascular. Uh, activity. It can increase your metabolism, leading to calorie burning. I could use some of that. Amen. It boosts your immune system. Sweating is also an effective stress reliever, I read. But understand today that uh, uh, when we're in the heat of things in life, uh, friend, uh, I believe that the conditions can be such. And if you're really working and laboring at life, uh, like the Bible says, uh, the Bible says to work out your own salvation salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. How many, how many can bear witness that it's hard work sometimes uh, uh, to be a Christian, uh, that I know that the grace of God is the gift. Uh, that's the gift of life that God gives everybody upon the face of the earth. But friend, if they don't tell you from that point on that you're going to have to work in the kingdom of heaven, you're going to have to work to overcome the flesh. You're going to have to work to know the Bible. You're going to have to work to pray sometimes because the heavens seem brass and they've not told you the truth. But friend, working and laboring produces an appetite for more of God. And God will get you in this cycle to where you just get a taste. You know what? I believe that when you start working and labor, there, when I used to work on these old construction sites, uh, they'd have ice uh, water buckets set up. You had to have them. You get out there. I've worked in 100-degree in heat in the middle of summer. Someone said, how in the world did you survive through that? I kept an intake. I knew I was putting it out. It was going through my system. Amen. And, friend, I had an appetite for it. My, there was. I didn't want coffee. I didn't want a Dr. Pepper or or a Coke, or a Diet Pepsi. I wanted water. Come on, somebody. And that water can cleanse you just like it. It detoxifies your body. The bottom line is here, if you're not thirsty, you may not be active enough in the spirit. You see, I'm messing for just a little bit, but if it's all right, if you don't have a thirst for the things of God, then maybe you're not engaged in the right work and you're working at life at the wrong things and, and they're not produce, producing something. I know that you're going to find conditions, uh, amen, uh, that, are, that are right. Uh, and amen, God will allow God will allow tests and trials to come your way. Things will get hot in life. He lets that happen. He doesn't cause it to happen. But you see, we're in this world. This world has a curse attached with it. And friend, God will let you go through some things because He wants to keep you thirsty for Himself. Help me somebody today. Oh, I'm preaching better today than what you're acting. But it's all right. The Bible contains stories about people who were thirsty. Amen. 
As Israel wandered in the desert, they often complained about having not enough water to drink. They were physically thirsty. In John chapter 4, we see Jesus talking to the Samaritan woman. And you understand, as he talked to her, they were talking about water. She was talking about meeting a physical need. He was talking about meeting a spiritual need. He said, I'm going to give you something to drink that you will never thirst again. There's not, you're going to have a... You're going to have a taste of this and nothing else will ever satisfy your life again. John 7, 37 through 39 said, And on the last day and the greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. The Holy Ghost is often referred to. Amen. It's, it's, it's water from heaven. It's, so many people today are looking for satisfaction, but they're looking in all the wrong places. Help me somebody. Oh, come on. I said they're looking for satisfaction in things that the world has to offer. They want pleasure. They want things. Uh, amen. They want more money, more power. And all of the things that money or power uh, can give them in life, they won't truly meet the need that they have within themselves. Uh, I believe that God put a, a void in you that only himself can fill. Help me somebody today. The Bible says in Isaiah, who had believed our, our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Isaiah 53, he grew up before him like a tender shoot, like a root out of dry ground. He had made him to be beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering, like one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgression. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that was brought that the punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we were healed. Hallelujah. Are you thirsty for him this morning? Can anything meet those uh, needs that you have in your life? Like Jesus in the Bible, uh, time water is used, uh, like I said, as a, as a symbol uh, for the Holy Spirit. Uh, come, all ye who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you have no money, come buy and eat. Come by wine and milk without money and without cost. You see, the water of the Holy Spirit isn't something you can pay for today, but it comes by grace. It comes through faith. Amen. In the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you believe upon Him, something begins to spring up in you that you didn't know was even there. Oh, yeah, there's a fountain on the inside of you. Amen. That God wants to be loosed. I didn't want to go to church before, but now you can't keep me away. I didn't want to read the Bible before. It seems strange and void and foreign to me, but now I've just got to have that word. I didn't want to pray and talk to God before, but now I've just got to have more of Him. There seems like there's something bubbling up on the inside of me. There's a fountain. So the invitation is given by God. And then the Bible talks also, in verse 2, it talks about satisfaction. For it says, wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfies not? Hearken diligently to me, and eat that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. And the word satisfieth there is translated, and it means to be full. To be full. Uh, understand, 
uh, if you are wanting to, you see, people are wanting to be full in life. They're wanting to be, they've got, some, they've got a need. As I said, there's a void that's been created by God in their life, and nothing else can fill that void. And, friend, you can put foreign things in there. You can get more money. You can get more power. You can get more toys, uh, amen, to park uh, and build garages and have all kinds of things. But, friend, those things will never fill the void that God placed there for himself. Get Jesus. Get G we need to have a Jesus store, don't we? Oh, we've got one. It's the church. They can come down here and God will give himself to them. Have you seen the Jesus I got? Satisfaction. To be full. Amen. To be full. The word hearken here means to... It's, it's about... It's talking about hearken diligently. I, I, didn't, I don't know that I run word study there, but I understand, I understand that phrase, don't you? Doesn't it mean that you do something uh, with intensity? You do something with all that you've got. Hearken diligently. Amen. The Bible says uh, unto me, and, ye, and eat that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. The Bible says, incline your ear. The Greek means more than just to listen or hear. It means to hear intelligently. The King James says, hear, it, hear diligently. The satisfaction that God promises doesn't come to those who listen casually. It comes to those who hear intelligently. Come on, somebody. Now, I know today, hey, amen, this is an intelligent bunch. I can tell by the way you're sitting there today. No, <laughs> this is a good crowd. Amen. But those who hear intelligently will come to the Lord. Not one time, not two times, not, amen, but you'll come to the Lord for salvation, for healing. You'll come for provision. You'll keep coming back for deliverance. Amen. Whatever you have need of in your life, his name is Jehovah. Oh, look at him today. He's the Lion of Judah, the Light of the World, the Prince of Peace, the Good Shepherd. He's the Redeemer, the Savior. Come on, somebody, the Prince of Peace. Understand he's the Mighty God. What do you need him to be today? Keep coming back to the well. Amen. He will give you drink. You see, that's the kind of faith that the Lord wants us to have as believers today. He wants us to understand that we can't get this anywhere. We can't get full on anything else but the Lord God. I'm not telling you, amen, you got to sell all your stuff and just, just no, 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 no. Don't misunderstand me. You got to keep things first you got to keep, God, your priorities right. I know that nobody here has trouble with priorities, uh, amen, uh, like, like I do sometimes. But, friend, we just got to be focused. We've got to, we got to seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all of these things shall be added unto us. And if, if we'll give our all to God, God said, I'll build you a life. I'll take care of you. I'll make sure that you have what you need and more. Hallelujah. The last part of verse 3 is a promise that was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. You see, it says, incline your ear, come unto me, and hear, which means to hear intelligently, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Somebody say covenant. If you want money at the money store, you have to sign a covenant. A contract. It says, if you will pay, you if you will commit to pay the payments on this money, we will give you some money that you can have right now. We'll write a check. You can have it. Just what we agree to within this contract. God says that we shall have an 
everlasting covenant. It's a, it's a blood covenant. Amen. It's, it was, it's a blood covenant uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And friend, if we will commit ourselves uh, to the covenant, to the law, to, to God's Bible. Come on, somebody. I know that people uh, don't uh, reverence this word like they one time did. But friend, this is the word of God. You say, oh, pastor, amen, don't you understand uh, uh, that, uh, man, how could it be preserved down through the, the how, could we, how could it really be all right? Isn't it just, uh, it's not a suggestion, uh, it's, it's the word of God, it's God's will, his purpose for you and I, and as we adhere to it, as we give ourselves to the word of God, that we can count on the blessings coming. We can count on the peace of God coming. We can count on some things that you can't buy with money. Come on. You'll have joy unspeakable and full of glory when you know you're walking in covenant with God the Father. It just kind of makes you square your shoulders and, and say, hey, we're going to be all right. You say, Dad, how are we going to make it through? You don't have a job. I think we're going to be all right. I'm a covenant keeper. I'm a covenant child of God, and God's going to take care of me. He said, he was talking about bread in the Scripture. In verse 2 it said, Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread? Bread means satisfaction. You're spending money for things that really can't help you. In Deuteronomy 8, 1 through 3 it says, All the commandments which I command thee this day shall you observe to do that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee the, these, these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee and to know what was in thy heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know. I know that this bread that we're talking about today, Jesus is the bread of life, the Bible says in the book of John. Understand today that it may be something that you don't really, I've, I've never tasted that before, Pastor. I've really never had that manna from heaven before. I know, and that's the problem, and your flesh wars against it sometime. But friend, taste and see that God is good. Hallelujah. This is something that you cannot find anywhere else. Amen. That you might make thee know that man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Come on, somebody, today. Amen. How many believe that we ought to live by the word of God? Somebody help me in this place today. Hallelujah. And there's really only one thing that can really satisfy, and it's Jesus, amen, the living Word of God. And when we have Him in our life, amen, life makes sense, doesn't it? Somebody say amen today. Oh, praise God. I said Jesus has given us invitation, amen, to have all that He has given us in the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Father. Amen. And those that hear intelligently will come to the Lord and we'll get what he has to offer. The Bible says in Luke 2, uh, 1 through 12, it said, In those days, uh, in Caesar Augusta issued a decree from the census. Uh, amen. And uh, you, you know the story, the birth of Jesus Christ. We celebrate that. Amen. At, at Christmas time and, and understand. And Jesus came that uh, at that particular time and he showed up here in this uh, people planet uh, uh, to bless you and I. Amen. He says uh, I, in verse uh, Luke 2 and uh, verse number 10, it said, Don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. He is Christ the Lord. Amen. He's came to this earth. Listen to what the Spirit is saying here. The Bible says, incline your ear and come unto me. Isaiah 55, 3. Hear, hear intelligently and your soul shall live. 
and I will make an everlasting covenant with you and even the sure mercies of David. Now listen, we come, our great need is today uh, that we can be restored to God. Uh, we was uh, separated from God as our father Adam committed high treason in the garden and they were exiled from God and put out. And from that time on, God, has, he, well, actually, from the foundations of the world, God began, uh, he, he put a plan, plan in place uh, to bring fallen mankind back to himself. And God wants to have fellowship with you. He wants, he wants to help you. Amen. He wants to touch your life. And salvation is not just an insurance, a, a fire insurance plan. But friends, that covenant that we enter, enter into with God is about every aspect of your life. I said God wants to help you in everything in your life. Whatever it might be, God wants to deal, amen, with all the issues that you might face. Amen. If it's relationship stuff, put the counselor in the middle of your home and let him counsel you. Amen. If it's health in your body today, how about you get Jehovah, Sh Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer, amen, and declare that he is the Lord that healeth thee. Come on, somebody. Whatever you have need of, if you need uh, finances in your bank account, or a job, declare that he is a Jehovah. Amen. He'll help you in every way in your life. God can touch you. God can help you. God can heal you. Amen. God can help you. I don't know what you're going through things, but I, I guarantee you today that we've all got things we're working on. Oh, I know you, some, some of the church folk didn't like me saying that. But the issue is we've still, I know we've, we've, we've kind of feel like we've arrived sometimes, and that's, that's really a problem. That's a problem because if you think you're there, you can't, you can't get there. God said, come. Hallelujah. Father knows best. Sometimes, amen, we just need to, we need to take his direction and trust him with our life and understand that God is going to see us uh, to the other side. Praise God. Now listen, I'm closing here, sis. Y'all can come back if you'd like. If, if we... If we were commissioned by the king of England and he were to tell you, hey, sailor, I want you to get in that ship out there in the harbor and I want you to go to America. Now, listen, we're living in a different time. I know Columbus kind of had a little bit of trouble because he was doing some things people hadn't really done before. But you see, our commander knows full well where we're going. And he's charted course for us. And he gives us maps and things to look at. It would be very, it would, it would be very wrong for that captain to just get in that seat, that, uh, that ship, and just say, put the masts up, put the sails up. We're going to America. Sit back, guys. We're going to get there by and by. You see, no, you can't get there that way. You need to go the way that the commander has told us to go because we have we have a map today that will help us to get from where we've been called to the place that he's called us to and yeah you need to put the sail up and you need to trust in God but friend we need to do something with what we have here intelligently and be saved here intelligently and be healed Come on, somebody. I'm not, I'm not trying to be rude or cruel this morning, but understand today, if you will make Jesus Christ a priority in your life, your life is bound to change. It'll change like that. It'll change like that. And then don't, don't allow your, your ship to drift. 
by chance or by happenstance, make sure that you're setting your course for heaven. And God said, you'll not only have heaven, but I've prepared for you on the journey that you're going. Hallelujah. You see, that king of England, he wouldn't put you on a ship without, I'd be wanting to know, what, what are we putting in the hall? Have we got any provisions down there? You see, God's provided for you everything that you need in life. Come on, somebody. The invitation is given. Come. Come. Amen. Come on, hear. Hear his voice. Don't try to satisfy yourself with the things of this world only. Amen. Seek that that he satisfies eternally in your life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I already said that probably everybody in this room today has, has something that they're trying to work on in their life or should be. Jesus is here to help you with that today. He wants to touch your life to, to meet your needs. He wants to give you increase today. If you're struggling today, amen, God wants to, he wants to give you buoyancy. Amen. You don't, you're not going to sink. You're not going to drown. God's going to keep you upright. Don't forget him. Don't forget him. Amen. He is the way and the truth and the life. And no man comes to the Father but through him in the name of Jesus. As we stand this morning, come on, will you just stand with me? And let's just allow the Holy Spirit. We pray every heart be open today. We pray every life. Amen. Be responsible. Hear the word of God today. Know that God set you up today for blessing. God set you up today. Amen. To, to bless your life, to meet your needs, to touch you in the name of Jesus. You don't have to be what you've always been in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, visit us now. Visit us now, Lord God. Talk to us. Talk to us, God. Lord, let us not pretend. Let, let us not serve God. Lord Jesus. Amen. Let us serve God in reality. Let's be real before him today. If there's anybody here today, if you need Jesus, if you need God's help, his strength, we're going to give an altar call here today. This is, a, this is an opportunity for you to respond to God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't let these moments pass you by today. Glory to God. Glory to God. He's here. Is he speaking to you today? Is he speaking to you today? Hear the invitation come. Come in the name of Jesus. If you need Jesus today, receive him now. Receive him now. Glory to God. You say, what must we do? You just got to believe in your heart. The Bible says, the Romans road said, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and thou shalt be saved. Amen. Make him the Lord and the Savior of your life. God, you're going to do for me what only you can, God. I, I trust you with my life. Come on, pray right now. I feel like there's a, there's a struggle in the heavenly. I feel like right now, amen, somebody somebody right now is about, about to get what they've been looking for. They may not even know that they need it today. Amen. But God wants you to have it. Amen. And there's a struggle right now. Spirit, come on, pray. Pray, saints. Pray with us right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, prayer warriors. Come up here and stand with us this morning. In the name of Jesus, glory to God. If you need touched, if you need help, amen. If you need Jesus as your own Lord and Savior, amen. Make him the Lord of your life today and live and live and not die. Hallelujah. And God can satisfy your soul. God will give you bread that will satisfy your thirst, your hunger in Jesus' name. Glory to God. If there's anybody today, if you say, Pastor, amen. His heads are bowed and eyes are closed. If you're in this building today, if you need Jesus, if you need help, if you need strength in your walk with God, maybe you're struggling. If you'll be real today, if you just slip a hand up and say, Pastor, I know I have a need today. I know I have a need today. If there's anybody here today, come on. God wants to help you right now. God wants to save you right now. God wants to start a brand new day in your life right now. Amen. If there's somebody here today 
Maybe somebody's been playing game. Don't play with this thing. Come on. Be real. Be honest. Be open before God. God's going to give you life and that more abundantly in the name of Jesus. If you come, if you come, we'll pray with you today. Step over the flesh. Step over the flesh. I know. Amen. Step over pride and come. Come to the Lord today. Hear his invitation. Thank you, Jesus. If you have need, come. If you have need, come in Jesus' name. If you have a need, come in Jesus' name. Is there anybody else? Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let God help you today, whatever you need might be. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. pray for him today brother Johnny we pray in Jesus name we pray father today for Robert we pray in the name of Jesus that you touch him father that you'd uh, uh, bring healing but father first and foremost we pray father open the eyes of his heart Lord God Lord God I pray that he be given to you be given to your works that he might call out upon that name of Jesus today father God and be saved and Lord God let healing flow as well we pray in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, work your work in his life, God, we pray. We trust, we trust in you today, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, God. Bring him in, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody else today need prayer help? Come on. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Pastor, a friend of mine. Her little girl was hit in the face by a baseball yesterday, and I, you know, she didn't break any bones or anything. They took her to the emergency room, but I told her we would be praying that God would just heal that quickly, that there wouldn't be pain and, and not a lot of swelling and stuff today. So What's that little girl's first name? Her name is Reagan, and also let's pray for Robbie, too, because his arm was cut pretty badly last night, and yeah. pray there won't be infection or anything in that. Amen. We pray for Reagan today. We pray, Father, that you'd bring healing to her body, and to her life, God. We pray discomfort and pain, uh, Father, be gone. And then every sign, every symptom, Father, God, be removed. Touch this baby today. We pray in the name of Jesus. And, God, we pray for your healing touch upon Robbie today, Lord God. I pray, Father God. Oh, may he see your handiwork. May he know, Father God, that you was near. Lord, that you spared him, Father God. Lord, in this accident, in Jesus' name, Father. We pray, Father, touch, touch that arm, God. Let that, let that uh, wound heal. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father. We give you all the praise. And glory. Hallelujah. 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 Healing today. Amen. Lift your hand this way as we pray for Sister Heather for healing. The Bible says, Amen. Let the sick call on the elders of the church, anointing with oil. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, speak faith. Speak healing today. We pray that you touch. We pray that you touch in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. We pray. We speak. We speak healing over Sister Heather right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. We pray your healing virtue. Let it flow today. We give you praise. We give you glory. Touch her now, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. 
Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Anybody else this morning today, if you need touch, if you need help, if you need Christ, come on. Come on, we'll pray with you today. pray together today. We pray, Father, that you just be, uh, Father, with Owen and tragedy and hurt. Father God, we pray that you just comfort the family, Lord God. Oh, Lord Jesus, we pray, Father God. There's nothing we go through, Father, that you won't go through with this. God, I pray. I pray comfort him. Oh, may your grace, may your grace be poured out to this family. In the name of Jesus, God. Oh, yes, Father God. Help them, give them strength, Father God. Let the sun shine in their lives now, Father God. Lord, they need you, we pray. Thank you, Father God. Touch them. Touch them, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, you're our paraclete, God. So, thank you, Father. Thank you. stand together today we just pray father your grace for these loved ones god in this home in the name of jesus touch them help them father god in the name of jesus in the name of jesus counselor counselor we pray come now come now lord oh yes lord jesus we pray father god that you touch them lord as they need touch help them lord god Lord, we come against, uh, uh, Father God, every work of the enemy, Father God. All the words of the enemy in the name of Jesus, Father. We pray grace, Lord God, uh, to this couple in this home in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Do what only you can, God. Do what only you can. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands all over this building this morning. Just worship Him. Just worship Him in spirit and in truth. Oh, magnify the Lord together today. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Someone else today. Someone else today. If you need a touch, if you need a touch today, come. God is a good God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. you to